Always opportunistic, Martin took elements from canonical art he loved and arranged them within his finished compositions. Over time, this created a general sense of rhythm, to use a musical metaphor, that became his art's score. Rather than developing an overly specific iconography within his body of work, uh, he was more interested in that methodology. And it seems that it gave his work a sense of dealing with multiple themes. So, in, in the case, if you see something you feel is referential, consider that a note rather than uh, citing it. And then over the course of looking at a great deal of his work, it's a score of music resting on bars. Uh, so it's a very broad concept that you need to look at his work in groups rather than just one piece. During the late 70s, from uh, 77 to 78 specifically, Martin lived with Isabel Taylor, a Washington, D.C. interior decorator. Uh, he, at this time, I believe, he started calling himself an artist in residence uh, because he very rarely was able to or did pay rent, and he would kind of uh, reside on people's couches and in their guest rooms. Uh, in Isabel's case, he traded work uh, for a place to stay. And uh, Martin's loner sensibility at this time, as well as seemingly referential work, hurt his initial uh, reception. So even so, he refused to have a career other than that of an artist and just decided that that was the lifestyle that he wanted to live. And here we have Untitled 1978. This is another one of those collages. He really hit his stride with collages in 1990 or in the 90s. And so we're unclear when this bird image was collaged into a store-bought frame. But that's definitely what's happening. The work is right here on the wall. So he purposely kept terrible records because he wanted us to think about these things, kind of place ourselves. Well, where was I in the 1990s? Where was I in 1978? What was happening in the world at that time? That's kind of the, the conceptual impetus of his work. And then in the early 80s, he moved to uh, a kind of brown ink that he applied with a bamboo reed. And uh, here again, he left much, much of the interpretive uh, heavy lifting to the viewer. Um, during this time, Martin was also a fixture at Food for Thought, a Washington, D.C. restaurant located on DuPont Circle. He was a known entity, and in spite of his ostensibly bad career and lifestyle choices, he became a sought-after advisor to a variety of patrons of Food for Thought, as well as generally residents of the New Palm Circle area. His status as a man on the town and artist made him very approachable. As a result, he became known as a shrink to common people. He gave advice in a way that mirrored, perhaps self-consciously, uh, mystics from bygone eras. The random nature of these chance encounters with strangers, coupled with a hint of mysticism, had a reciprocal relationship to his artistic practice. Martin's advice and art both improvised wellsprings from his mind. I don't know if people would have liked to know that they were improvised, but um, were a strange mix of magic and frank statement. And tr he treated both as though they were higher metaphysical communications with indeterminate <coughs> meanings. And uh, during this time, he lived with Marco Leonardi, the photographer who I mentioned before. And so here's an example of a bamboo reed pen work, untitled 1982. And again, it's hard to tell where he started mark making, but uh, the end result, of course, is a, a very balanced composition. Here's a slightly later work from 1983. This kind of strange robotic squid creature with a very fashionable looking hat. Uh, leaves a, a lot for you to think about. But uh, again, there's no clear narrative or implied meaning that's necessarily set. <clears throat> then later in the 80s, between 85 and 88, he worked strictly with black ink and, uh, and white paper with, occasion, with the occasional use of graphite. Eugene met Suzanne during this time. Um, or shortly before that, rather, while she was a research fellow at the Smithsonian. She earned her PhD in botany from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, in 1988. 
And so during this time, their relationship was growing very strong. And uh, he was coming into his own as an artist as well. And around this time, he created his own vocabulary to separate himself from other artists or any particular movement. He called his work satirical abstracts, which revealed his own self-deprecating humor, but also his confidence in that it spoke to the irony with which he viewed artists in the art world in general. So this is perhaps my favorite piece from this, from this period, uh, untitled 8687. It features a highly abstracted sparrow-sized bird. I can guess at that sense of scale because of that highly abstracted shirt cuff in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, do you see that little blue dot? Please go look at it after the talk. It's a, a button snap that's been rendered in virtually photorealist uh, drawing. And it gives you serious pause and really makes you reevaluate the work. It makes no sense. And I'm pretty sure that's what he was angling for. And it gave you pause to think, why would this small, seemingly wild bird light on someone's arm? What were they doing? What was happening? Um, and it just it gives you enough pause to really take the work seriously. And I really enjoy that particular piece because of that. It's this very fast-looking, sleek moment that I enjoy a great deal called the sharp, curving lines. It just makes it seem like that bird isn't there for a moment. It's going to be gone the very next moment in a fleeting way. Here's another work, 1988. Not all of them have that blatant uh, representational imagery, of course, but that just gives you more to chew. Now, in the late 1980s, Martin started working with small format photography. These small photographs, while not unrelated to his artistic output to that point, stood apart. Martin quickly integrated photography into his practice when he realized his, doc his photos were documents of a moment in time that, when viewed later, could be separated from the context of their creation while still remaining linked to it. This visual strategy acknowledges the linear manner in which human culture organizes and documents history, as well as the chaotic dogpile history becomes in the, the realm of memory, the kind of just chaos that ensues when you start thinking about memories related to a theme. Uh, Martin worked with photographs only as an autonomous art for a brief time, so the, the photographs themselves weren't necessarily an art, singular art object for a very long time. But photography became the cornerstone of some of his very best mature work. Starting in the 1990s, Martin used photographs exclusively as a formal component in collages. From this point forward, Martin's photographs featured images only of work he had already created. The photographs served the purpose of walking the edge between uh, um, an image floating adrift in time as well as uh, a point in linear time. This is my favorite, my favorite piece here. Uh, I drank it all, and it features a can of Hormel chili and a, and a kettle that are very angry at the pot. Uh, it kind of characterizes a madcap and highly emotional scene where the chili and the pot show outrage at the saucepan for drinking an unidentified and highly sought after liquid. So it leaves you guessing, what was that liquid? What are these pots so angry about? But he's given these inanimate objects human characters, and there's really no way for you to relate to that. And immediately it makes me start thinking of family arguments, perhaps, in the kitchen. And, and that's what I love about that, the kind of random, free-flowing uh, sense of memory that I get when I look at these particularly playful pieces. Here's, here's the other in our collection, Hey Burn. Uh, even the dialogue doesn't necessarily make sense between the two talking nutcrackers and words. So I really enjoyed that a great deal as well. <clears throat> now, perhaps one of the reasons that he started engaging with photography and had this breakthrough was that it represented a, a cheap and portable media for a husband of a, an academic whose career may take them all over the world. It seemed like something that he could follow through on no matter where they went. 